Welcome back. And in this series of little lectures, we want to talk about some of the properties of strings. We looked at character variables where we could have one uh, ASCII character, like the letter A, stored in a variable. But what if we want a whole string of characters, a line of text, a word, a sentence, a paragraph? In that case, we move on to a string. A string is similar to an array of characters with one important distinction. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Here's how you would define a string. For instance, string 1, it's a, of type character. And here we've used a string constant, double quotes, to put a word or a phrase or any kind of symbols we want in here. As you can see, there are five symbols in here. But the size of string 1 is actually 6. You can see that because what makes a string different from an array of characters is it has a terminator character. That terminator character is called null and is just a 0. This is one way of representing it here in the second line, which is also made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the null, which could have been just zero if we liked. Right? Stands out a little better if we leave it as quotes, single quotes, backslash zero. That's just saying it's in base eight, the zeroth character. Now, you don't have to have as much text as you do memory space. Here, hello only has five characters, but I've given it space for six, for 50. We don't have to define what the string is at all, like blank here. I haven't defined anything. Okay, so one of the first things we want to do is show how you would print these guys out. Well, you can use this format specifier, percent %s, right? So Here's what we, the, what we want to print out. And then string 1 would fill whatever string 1 is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, into here. You don't have to have this. You can just put the string in by itself. But then you can't do any formatting. Another thing to remember is you, don't, you just use the string name. You don't have to use square brackets or anything like that. We can have a look at that if we go to putty. So I hit enter, and you can see string 1 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was these two. And the blank line here is comes from this new line return. OK, what next? Well. Since we're dealing with characters, and I said they're like arrays, if you want to work with the individual characters in the string, then just like arrays, you need something like a for loop. For instance, here's a for loop, and it's taking string 2, and it's adding 3 to each of the numbers. Right? So you have to think back to the ASCII table. And we're moving three along from the original character's position. So let's have a look at what that prints out. So press enter. And you see the new number is four, five, six, seven, eight. Because four is three characters up the ASCII table to the character one. If I had had in my original number, something like uh, 9. We'd have to look at the ASCII character at several after 9. That's it for now.